So, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, since we have three or so English guests, I will try to annoy you with my English accent. Um, and so, actually, I wanted to. Can we turn down the volume a little bit? Okay. So, I want to use the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the demo scene. So, it's a little bit. Some of you might know everything I'm going to tell you. Some of no might know might know any, uh, nothing at all. So, um, a little bit about me. So, my name is uh, Thomas Mann. I'm uh, I used to be a like, computer kid until I tried to break out and study architecture. And uh, then, because there is no money in architecture, I became a designer. And uh, and recently, I started my own business. And um, so this is about me. But ah, so one thing, so you can see my handle there. It's Pixtour from Still Ecosy and Bauknecht. I will explain a bit about that later. So, but so a little bit questions, some questions about you. So some quick survey. So you can practice. Can you practice raising your arm to answer? Like, can you raise your arm? So it's a very, it's, it's very fast. So um, so do you have do you, do you work with PC? Raise your arm. I, I work with PC. Okay. Do you work with Apple? Actually, I also work with Apple. Okay, it's like evenly distributed. So do you know anything about like the following terms? Blender, Maya, VVVV, DirectX, Quartz Composer, Processing, WebGL, Fractal Shaders. Have you heard? Okay, this is a target audience. So did you spend more than one hour with VVVVV? Nobody. Um, actually, oh, there, there is somebody there. Great. With Blender? Actually, I only half an hour. With Processing? Okay, some. With Max MSP? No. With Quartz Composer? One, two. Okay. So this was the quick survey. This gives me like a rough intro, uh, like rough idea of like whom I'm talking to. So like this is the um, this rough structure. So like I'm going to tell you a little bit about the demo scene. Then I tell you a little bit about us, our group still, and then I will sh try to explain explain to you how we make demos, or maybe like show a little bit how we work, and then I'm telling a little bit about why I'm giving this talk. So let's start with the demo scene. So like there are a lot of uh, different definitions. So there's a pretty long Wikipedia article on the topic, how to define it, um, and it's really difficult because it's some kind of underground subculture, so everybody has its own discussion, and my uh, is, is his own definition. My definition is competing with music code and design, and not like in either of the categories, but in all categories combined. So um, I don't really know why it's called a demo scene. Maybe it's because of like demo something, but actually the term is a little bit irritating because it's only one of the categories that are there. So it belongs to categories of categories, and like the first category of categories is limited size. So like demo basically. The only size limit nowadays is that you can't submit movies. So it needs to be real time. But then there are like other categories like 64K, 4K, 1K, and yeah, even like there are like some bytes demos. And um, then of course there we have different platforms. PC obviously, it started from PC and uh, like then we have Amiga old school alternative, and recently we have this new categories of like web browser demos. And obviously, since the demo scene is about creating culture, there are like all kinds of media formats. So if you go to a demo scene event, you can also submit a picture or like a wild animation or ASCII art or all kinds of stuff. So essentially, the main categories are about doing animations within a, within a size limit, which means so impress the audience in within like three minutes. So it must be like really kick ass, nice music, nice graphics, and nice code. But it must be within a size limit. So you can't just submit a movie and render it, pre-render it. But it needs to be rendered on the fly, just like a gaming engine. And normally, to squeeze it within the size limit, you need some kind of procedural algorithms. What this means, I will explain a little bit later. But um, within this, 
real-time generated animations, they are like different flavors for different people creating it. So one flavor is like make it as small as possible and increase the ratio between number of bytes invested and visual impact it made. So this uh, the thing you see here is um, this is a screenshot of a, a 4K intro called Hard Fat Rated. And um, so basically it's a three minute animations and it comes actually with really nice music. So the music is included and like everything is being created like on the fly within like this 4K executable. And so like to give you some idea of like what 4K means, so this is like some text I like. It's only the beginning of a really nice uh, fairy tale, but this is like roughly 4,000 characters. So, um, so if you imagine, like once again, like there's this animation, and this, you have all the code and all the algorithms, all everything you need to produce like an animation like that. So it's like this is not the source code, but this is the number of bytes you use for that. The source code, or like the actually the actual code, is that. So it's actually, if you think about it, it's like it's 4,000 bytes. It's nothing. And um, roughly, I think normally you spend like 1.2K you spend just on the music. So like starting from here, there, this is like the music. And it's actually nice music, so we, we will show it later, uh, for like a three minute animation. And so if you then imagine, okay, let's assume we scale it down a little bit. So the, the JPEG I showed, is like 800 kilobyte and actually it's like the quality is worse because we have some compression artifacts. So like the size limit of 4K is just completely, completely crazy. Um, there's another flavor I would call like old school and um, I have like a lot of discussions with people doing old school demos but nowadays I slowly get it. <laughs> um, because this is a really nice, nice idea to work on a play field where the rules are set in stone. So you have to say 64, for instance, is now like 20 years old. And um, so they're still making demos with it, but the demos look nicer than like 10 years ago. And you keep wondering how they do that because like the hardware didn't change. And still, they still figure out stuff. You know, if you think about like football, they change like the, the rules of football like every couple of years. So with like C64, like the rules are set in stone and they're still like improving it. And um, there's like one category which like I picked as my target field and this is like demo. We used to do like a couple of 64K demos, but uh, the ratio between work you have to invest to, to make something really nice and the uh, reward for me as a designer was like just not, uh, not satisfying enough. And once we got the tool chain right, it was also not that much of a challenge. So once you got a release a product fitting in this one in this category, you normally you submit it to a competition. So and there are like a couple of rules for this competition. So you only you can only release it once. So once you went to a demo party and released it there into the competition, it's burned. So basically, you have to do another one. And obviously. Since like this demo scene stuff started very early from the hacker cracker scene, they, they didn't really care about copyright material. So they that was just like so they, uh, they everybody copied everything anyways. But nowadays they care because like the gamer are giving them a hard time playing like copyrighted material and copyright music, so they everything has to be copyright free. And which means everything has to be created from scratch by the people participating in the production. And Finally, you basically, the competition is normally running on a demo competition at a party place, and the people attending the party vote. So basically, this decides who wins the competition. So normally, it looks like that. So basically, people sitting there, maybe later like you, and watching like a big screen that is not this picture, and they say like, oh, oh like really, oh, how did they did that? This is really nice, I liked it. And um, so before, like the competitions, normally the party atmosphere looks a little bit like that. So you have like long rows of tables and people like drinking and working hard on their releases because you have like groups distributed all over the place. And normally they come together at a party place to finish a release and get drunk or both. Um, 
and um, so like, this is another picture from our party place. This is a revision in Saarbrücken. It's an awesome party. I would recommend everybody to go there. It's really, really nice people. It's actually very cheap to get in. And uh, it's a, an awful three days at Easter with a lot of DJX and concerts and nice animations. Um, oh no, ah, there we go. So since we um, had just like three category, uh, like three segments, like code, design, and music, we have like tons of really, really, really great musicians. So there's always in the evening there's always party with DJX and like world class musicians. So it's, it actually is party, and. Um, so, uh, if you see, like, uh, if you observe party uh, uh, sceners in their real environment, it's, it's a little bit, um, it's a special experience, let's put it that way. Um, so, I once heard an anecdote that, uh, so there was like a small party in North Europe, and for some reason, like, the people going there decided to fool the taxi drivers into, like, telling them that's the North European gay porn convention. <laughs> and um, so they, yeah, the taxi drivers still think that, so they uh, couldn't, con <laughs> couldn't ex <laughs> explain them otherwise. Uh, so, um, so eventually you need a group because there's just no way you can make like a proper release alone. There's just like the, the, the bar is now so high that you have to team up. And um, so this is a screenshot from our website, and um, basically our group, as I said, is still. And um, so there's no like leader or something. It's basically people coming together, making releases in different configurations, and basically this is all the people who worked on eventually some demo. And um, yeah, what you see there is like basically so I'm Pixtour. If you had that earlier, um, so in, within the demo scene, you only speak to each other with like nicknames, which is like really weird if you like suddenly get like friend requests at Facebook and you just can't place these people and the pictures look all like really weird and you don't know who they are. Um, so anyways, um, this is a screenshot from uh, a website called Pruit, which is the central database of like all the demo scene releases and basically this is the productions we made. So we actually, we did a lot of different stuff. So we had like two, one kilobyte intros, I wasn't part of that, and uh, a lot of 4Ks and like two 64Ks, this was like I did the design for them, and we made a couple of demos. So and basically within this talk I'm now going to focus on the demo category because at least there I know what I'm talking about. Um, so making demos is actually um, like how you pick your weapon is actually like your personal, ta uh, like your personal taste. Whatever works, works. So and but they still within the people uh, within the uh, the scene, there's a, like a huge discussion of like what's the proper way. Like the proper way is C plus plus and a text editor and no text intention in, in, in indentation. Maybe maybe it's not. Or maybe the proper way is like really like focusing on building like a demo tool and then tweaking every keyframe. So. I'm not saying like, uh, like what's the proper way, but um, so hard coding is a choice. And normally you start with hard coding because there are already like a lot of frameworks and it's actually like really like nowadays with like the NVIDIA example stuff you download, you get like something running within like a couple of hours. Um, for like 4K and the old school stuff, there's just no other way than hard coding. And the second thing is like, okay, you could write a tool so um, it's like a lot of more work than you might think. So it takes years and years and years. And potentially you get like no reward or late reward. And uh, I just like today I saw like a really nice demo tool and was like, oh, you never used it. Mm. Okay. Um, and the third option that is now coming up is actually using a tool that's already there. Because uh, in the latest wave like all the big groups release their demo tools and you can actually download them at github and like start playing around with that so um what we did was um basically yeah, we did a couple of productions of hard coding and eventually you have like your engine and then you start adding like some text file to this engine so you don't have to recompile but you can reload the script file and the script file is like lots and lots and lots of keyframes with values in it and um 
then after like having like text files with like I don't know 100k just like keyframe value keyframe value and you have to edit it by hand. Uh, we started dreaming about a tool and we built one where we cloned like the Werkzeug. It was like the first openly available demo tool from uh, Fabrosch. And we made a couple of productions with that. And it took us basically, let's say, two and a half years to like get the first release out. And it was like so close to say, like, okay, if we don't release at that party, I'm quitting the scene. So it was really like it was really a hard way. But then it turned paid off and we made a couple of productions and we learned quite a lot. And doing that, we kept a, a list of feature requests we had, and um, eventually we started like with this new tool um, and switching from OpenGL to DirectX and to C-sharp and like .NET and stuff. And basically, I want to show you actually the tool, the new version of tool here. So I should emphasize um, that so like it's not a commercially available product and it will never be. And um, so we do this stuff in our spare time. So if it crashes, you may laugh. But also you should imagine like, um, so yeah, consider that it's like not professionally professionally, but it's getting there. Um, so let's start it up. So with this resolution, it's... Um, I'm sorry, I have to change something. Um, I have having a lot, a lot of fun with this laptop. And a lot of a lot of fun with Microsoft as well. You didn't see that. And you don't see this either, like ignore it. <laughs> so okay, now I have a little bit more space. You see less, but I can zoom in, so you can read something. And um, so basically, I first want to jump into like a productions we just made, and to give you like some idea of what we can do with that tool, and then I will like try to build something up from, from the scratch, so you get like a, an idea like how we work. And so, um, so our intro. Oh no, this was the wrong one. You are, uh, <laughs> so I have to scrub once, so everything is loaded and stuff. <laughs> Um, so basically, you have like, you know, obviously demos, there be, there's like animation with several parts. And um, so these are like some parts, and normally you have some music with that. So um, for the music we have, <coughs> oops, this was a little bit too loud. So um, we have like this little FFT here at the bottom, which is like very helpful because like everything lives from syncing to the beats and having white flashes and stuff like that and having a really nice camera that matches the music. So like this thing really helps me to sync to music. And, um, and if you scroll a little bit forward, we see some animation. And um, so basically these images are like computed on the fly. So um, which means that it's like not a video capture or something. This is like, uh, it's real time. Which means I can like zoom like quite a lot, and like I don't have to decide. Oh, I don't want this frame or that frame. But actually, uh, I can like scroll up with, with between these fr uh, bes these frames, and still like it's a fluent animation, which uh, might not sound like a lot, but it's actually is like once you have like some moving image, you can actually like recut it and scale it, and you don't have to do any frame interpolation or stuff like that. And um, so let's. Very bright here. So 
So, and um, let's take like any of these scenes and like, break it down a little bit to see like what's going on there. So, um, if we click here, we see like this is the this is this very long part here. We can open it. Double click here. And basically, we call like these green boxes operators, and the operators can be nested. So, like an operator can contain other operators. And so, like okay, this like this looks a um, little bit complicated, <laughs> but um, if you imagine that's actually like four minutes of animation, this is like constructed. It's actually not that much. And um, so within this animation, we have like a little bit of like post production here. We have like a little glow here, so we can basically I don't know, like increase the contrast here. And um, ah, I should also mention that if we zoom in, we see that basically the arrows are always pointing up. And actually, this is a good time to uh, mention like two concepts we had. So the first thing is um, while we are developing that, or before we developed that actually, we spent a lot of time thinking about interaction and the interaction model and how we actually want to work with that tool or how we want to work in the future. And uh, one thing was that it's actually more important to understand what's going on than to actually build it. So it's like uh, all the time before we always focused on the building step, but actually building step is completely irrelevant compared to like figuring out where's the, where's the problem. So that mean, which means we reverse the, the evaluation flow. So data is like flowing from the bottom, the smaller part to the top. But actually, you want to normally start reading from top. So getting the first picture and then breaking it down. So have this thing. Okay, this was built of that, and then okay, this is not working. For instance, the other concept we had was um, I wanted this tool to behave a little bit like um, like a, a kid's room with lots of Lego blocks scattered on the floor, which means um, so. You can always like, uh, actually, I never tried that. Okay, you stick it together, and then maybe you get bored with that, and you just like lay it, like, let it lie around there. But you can easily like arrange stuff. And uh, within this UI, we, I'm actually like really proud about this UI design um, because it achieved like both of that. So um, it looks like chaotic because it actually is just like, a, you know, like the, a playground with like lots of Lego blocks on it, but it's really, really easy to clean up. So if mom says like, oh, it looks dirty, then you can like, you know, it easily snaps together. And then we see like, oh, this is not used, so we can actually delete that. And um, we had this, um, so like a blocks stick, it's really a little bit like a magnet. And you basically you arrange it a little bit like you would arrange Lego blocks. Uh -huh. And once you have a Lego block, you can actually like always like direct the whole block around. So normally you start arranging like blocks and say like okay, this is one entity doing a little bit of function, and then you can move it some way where you need it, or you can just ignore it. Um, so sometimes I get into the urge of like cleaning up. Most of the time I look into like containers and like oh, well, this looks like um, I should have cleaned up. Um, so basically, coming back, so we have this post line, post processing state here. So we have like this glow, and then we have a group here, and these are like all the little steps here. So every time we we have like a cut here, so let's like focus on this part. You can double click here, so it's centered, and basically this switches to a camera. The camera is like some animations in here. And um, all these cameras animate the same scene, so this group. And this group is, um, like, okay, this is here in the background here. There's a geometry here. So basically, like, this is basically the wings you see here. Um, we have um, these particles in the foreground. They are not, maybe they're like a little bit obnoxious, but um, so we can make them much bigger. So let's <laughs> and, um, like everything is like real time, so you can go like very deep into like the the processing queue, or like the procedural tree, I would call it, and speak on details. We have this little, uh, we have like this little station operator, and we can make uh, like you can we can make it very bright or very subtle. Um, so if you, oh, actually, I should. <laughs> 
schön, dass das Particle ist a little bit down, yeah, like a really, really bright. So, um, we can even go further. So we have this ring geometry, and oh, this like looks a little bit messy. It's uh, made out of, like this concept was like, we have like wings and everything, every wing is like a certain like category of media. And within this rings, we have like different movie streaming. And so we have uh, like all these wings. So we switch the, the content of these wings. And we can also like switch into like one single wing and it looks like that. So it's like really once again like messy, but we could clean up if there would be need, but there wasn't. So we just left it like that. And um, so once again, we can like go in and um, tweak details. So if I, for instance, have like this, um, we have an image here. I don't know if it's easy to read. Basically, this is like intro here and here somewhere here. We have like intro. And um, we can, for instance, change like uh, the, the color of like the thing once again in real time. And it's like basically adjusting like the whole thing. And you never have like to render or something, it's just there. You're, so you're working with the real thing. So, um, but let me start from scratch. So, how, how are we doing on time? Okay, we actually are doing just fine. So, um, let's, oh, actually we should start with that. Um, I don't know if, I, I can't read that, but maybe you can. So this is our library. Um, and it's basically like a namespace of operators. So this is like, if you can't read it, it's the same library, the same lib, this is like 3D. And here we have like different operators doing stuff with 3D. And um, we started out with like just like a few operators, but um, operators, creating operators are so easy that they, it's like more like a, like a cancer or something. So they spread like, like we now have like tons and tons of operators because it's so easy. And um, so if I take an operator and drag it here, so it's basically just like this playground with, I have a Lego block here, and this Lego block creates a cube. I can move around and okay, this is my cube here. And this cube, I've selected it, I see the parameters of this cube. So right now it's just like height, width, and depth. And um, obviously I can adjust these, so like you would expect. And uh, I also have a couple of like presets here, but I don't want to use them now. Now like inside the library, um, we can basically see like what matches this operator. So we have a cube and on top of this cube, we can stack another Lego block, but not all of them match. So you can't stack cubes on cubes. This, you would do this differently. But what you can, can do is, for instance, you could uh, uh, say, uh, hey, wait a second, how, how do I rotate this cube, for instance? So this cube, it's only like a dimension, but you can't rotate it in space, because rotation you do with another thing. So we have a transform here. If we click that, so we have a new operator stacked on top of each of this cube. And now, like, we can rotate this cube and once again scale it and move it around in space and things like that. And um, so normally we don't really use that view <laughs> because uh, the faster way is actually to use um, a search thing. So basically, you keep on using the same operators over and over again. So I know, for instance, that um, I have an operator called scene repeat and just type scene rep hit enter and then I have the new Lego block stack on that. And this basically is uh, an operator that clones this. So basically I can, uh, let's say, rotate it. And so basically I have this little spiral there. I can take a little bit. Um, so the nice thing about like this procedural stuff is since it's, um, it's like we extracted the rotation, for instance, from the cube. You have like entities that focus on very few properties. But you're building something where you can actually like focus on just what you want to do. So if I say like for instance, okay, like give me like the final thing, this is like the spiral, but actually now I want to change the look of the cubes, but I can still go down to the cube and basically change the look of it. 
or I can exchange, or I want to exchange the orientation of this cube thing here. So um, you can also um, group things. So we had, for instance, this like uh, you can't stack cubes on top of cubes, but what you can do is basically you can like release these. So we have this little like uh, this is the block. This is like you know, separated. Obviously, you can like disconnect and connect, and you can like duplicate this cube and um, add like a group here, split it here, and stack it here. And now we have uh, basically this this tunnel with two cubes lying on top of each other. But uh, we could like yeah, maybe like slowly we see basically these two cubes. And obviously, I can like add um, a transform node here to, for instance, like rotate it. I know looks kind of interesting. And uh, so normally I would leave it like that, but uh, since we are now like in public, I will like clean it up. <laughs> so uh, this is like our new like tunnel here. And uh, so this is like all scene stuff. Uh, scene meaning it's geometry. So and the next step to make it uh, so like. Ten years ago, you would actually you would have built demos like that, but nowadays you have like post-processing and uh, like really complex post-processing pipelines. So what you do is you render. Oh wait a second, we should first. I forgot something. Um, so normally on top of a scene you add the camera. If we like walk the camera here, we can navigate the camera. You see here the basically the the properties of the camera, so we can like sh adjust like stuff like field of view and obviously position. And also, we had like this little sound, so which comes from a demo I made like a while ago. A musician sits here somewhere <laughs> inside the dark mat. Um, so let's assume we want to have like you know, a flight through this tunnel and maybe like on beat we want like this cube to to pick at us. So um, let's start with the camera animation. Basically go there, select the camera and we set some keyframes here. And basically now we can uh, navigate and every time we move or we modify an animated parameter, it's a little bit like After Effects, you insert immediately insert new new, uh, new keyframes. So we can like play a little bit. And say like, okay, at this point, I want to look at like that. And play a little bit further. to look at the, the end of the spiral. So um, uh, we now have like this little animation here. Let's save in case the application crashes. <laughs> and um, so since I'm obsessed with animation, so we put like a lot of work into uh, the actual keyframe functionality. So you can do things like, uh, for instance, change this moving of like these blinds and uh, also like you know change the tangents and stuff like that or like move everything around and squeeze it so it just like matches to the to the music. Um wait a second I should change the layout here. So now we can take like everything we built and why not to a texture. So when I started like working with this stuff, like the textures, they were like uh, you had to be like power of two textures, which means like I don't know, like power of two, like sixteen, thirty-two, and so on. And so, um, so normally you would say like, oh, I take like for this buffer, I take like five hundred twelve by uh, ten twenty-four. It doesn't really match the the, the 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 aspect ratio of the screen, but this is what I get. And then like, normally you say, oh, nee, this is too slow. So uh, like really, there was always like compromise be between like these textures and uh, 
the render quality and the performance. And nowadays, uh, you don't have these restrictions anymore. So the, basically, this render to image target is being created on the fly, and it has just the size of the window. And if I rescale the window, like the, this render target will be rescaled and stuff like that. So now it's an image, which just like, uh, looks just like the thing before. But I can now like, change the background color or something. Um, I can also do neat things like, um, for instance, add motion blur. So, um, um, I don't know, it doesn't look, if it doesn't work, I just blame my developer. So, okay, this is like a little bit too much. Maybe, maybe we don't need motion blur, maybe motion blur was the best. We don't want that. So basically, I, I leave it there, maybe I decide I want like motion blur later. So it's like this kid's playground again. So, but uh, actually, uh, I just learned this. Death of Fields is actually working. Or maybe it isn't. No, focus, range, size. And it's like this is like still read time, so you can actually do like really advanced stuff nowadays. Um, so this is the neatest implementation of motion uh, of depth of field, but uh, adds a little bit. And obviously, you can still go like further down to the to the pipeline and like change the seed. So live. Uh, let's make it uh, fill it up a little bit. Um, what you can also do is, um, so the, the first demo we made only had like one render pipeline. So then you soon figure out that uh, actually you want to have like a lot of pipelines, how to shape stuff. So let's add this here. So basically we have like different shaders. We have a funk shader and the funk shader requires a point light. Here, maybe I would like scale the attenuation down, and okay, let's like the point light here. I can move it around. Maybe we also add a little bit of fog. And uh, okay, maybe this isn't the most dramatic animation ever, so we will uh, add like a little bit of camera swipe here. So we see it a little bit. And um, Ah, we wanted to have like the the spikes poking at us on the beat. So finding the beat is easy. So it's like this like red thing here. So we pick a cube that matches like this one. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, actually, this this could work. So we set a keyframe. We uh, set another keyframe here, and we say like, okay, this is like a Basically on beat, it's moving a little bit into, into, into that direction. And you um, can set another keyframe here. And the nice thing is that um, you can now just like repeat these keyframes over time. Basically, we have like a little bit of thing here, but it's like way not dramatic enough. So let's Basically, linear interpolation sucks, so we make it uh, horizontal. 
Maybe you just like this thing here a little bit. And um, since yeah, I, uh, I recently indulged in the power of uh, lens flares. So let's add some lens flares here. Oh, actually, it's not correct. So the lens flares must come below the light. So um, this is like, I have to admit, I prepared that uh, before the talk. But this is a basically just a building block how to make lens flares. And um, so I, this was like our group, and this one I just created. And obviously, I can ungroup that again and unpack it and like get like the contents of this block out and uh, use it. It's like it looks like very um, CSD, but uh, and now we could like turn this into like a proper proper demo and like animate the hell out of it. So maybe like you want to like rotate this like all the time. So we say like set keyframe. So maybe you know there's a keyframe. Animate that, say, after curve, repeat continuously. That's actually my favorite part. So you only have two, two keyframes, and still everything is animated. And so maybe this is like not fast enough. Let's make it faster. And then you could now like add timeline elements to cut it into like certain parts. So say uh, on that beat, we want to cut into the next scene, things like that. Obviously, you can also like the you have no idea how powerful modern graphics cards are. You just have may may maybe you have, but um, let's say most of you have no idea how powerful modern graphics cards are because. Uh, half a year ago, I hadn't. Um, so now no, we will later show you a demo, like at the end of the screening or latest release, that basically computes fractals on the fly, and it does uh, evaluate like uh, basically way more code than was the 4K intro, and it evaluates this code for every pixel 60 times, and it's still once halfway fluent. So it's like it's just like it's it's really it's like completely insane how fast graphic cards are. So you can actually do like all kinds of stuff. So this ain't no, uh, this is nothing. So this is basically it would would run with like 400 frames or something. So you can do like all the kinds of like uh, at, uh, let's say um, experiment with Things like detecting edges. So how would this oh, looks? Does this look nice? I don't know, but it looks interesting. So you can actually do things like um, like build up complex uh, render pipelines where you basically start to pipe uh, like connect stuff and build like complex render pipelines. And obviously you can. Since this is just a texture, you can like uh, say um, set texture. And take the cube we had at the beginning. And add like the, the stuff like now on the cube, which is like, I don't know if this is meaningful, but sometimes um, sometimes you can build like really complex things by like rendering scenes into like a buffer and blending into the background to fake like certain things. And it's still fast enough, so you can like still like go on and like build like complex things. So back to the talk. I, uh, talk. 
Oh, I'm so sorry, you have to watch all this again. So it's like in a rehearsal. Um, so, um, so now to the question, so why would, do we do that? So obviously this is uh, a lot of work, but <laughs> So the question, like the first question, or like one of the, uh, the questions I hear from, let's say, press people quite a lot, is, is this art? So I can't answer this question. I know that there is a lot of shit out there in the demo scene, and there is a lot of like really like almost like kitsch and primitive stuff, and I wouldn't call that art. But uh, the demo scene has a huge bandwidth. And you know, like certain pieces are like uh, like the best animations I know. So you really, if you pick the right things, yes, it's art. Can you sell that in a gallery? I don't know. Some people try it, but I don't know. So is it relevant? Um, actually, it isn't. So it has no impact whatsoever. So um, um, really there is um, an insane amount of effort going into compression algorithm for this 4K stuff. It's like really, there's like, you know, like, it's like a, a science about how to compress stuff into four kilobytes, or like even one kilobyte. And is the stuff used? I don't know of any practical implication. Um, however, well, sometimes you learn stuff, so there's uh, like in this latest Pixar movie Brave, for instance, I heard that like a lot of like the grass you see is actually based on demo scene technology. But this is the only example I have. So can you make money with it? Certainly not. So like if you win a demo competition, and uh, I won a couple of them, so I know what I'm talking about. Um, like the first prize is normally around like 150 euros. And you have to obviously split this into like the group, so everybody gets two beer. Or like maybe like <laughs> 10 beer, but um, it's um, no, you don't do that for the money. And um, so why do we do that? Um, and my answer is always because it's, um, there's actually, I found nothing else to do with my life. It's the best hobby ever. It's like really, um, so if you try to figure out like how to use your time, it's actually, this is the way to do it, I think. Um, actually, if you could see if my Lumia is still working. No, this. Um, so, once again, back to this, like you need several pieces put together into a release. So, you have like coders, you have musicians, and you have designers, and everybody contributes their specialty. So, I, I have no clue about music. And like most of the code, the developers write, I have actually no clue what it's doing. So I'm still like fighting hard for getting like features, but um, actually like really how did it in, in I, just, I just can't tell because I'm a designer. However, like if you put like all the stuff together, you basically you create something new, something like you couldn't couldn't have done alone. And eventually, after like all this pain, like every release is a pain. It's really uh, it's really annoying, and you work like until like the last minute, and then you look at it, and you still like see like oh, like this keyframe is missing and this you see this artifact in this clipping plane. But nevertheless, you basically you made something, you made an artifact. And for me, like this artifact is like, basically defines like part of my, my life because it just stays there and um, it basically, it defines like a, a piece of, uh, um, it was like, it defines a moment. So at this time, I was with these people at this place, and it created like this, and like we had this like this fight and this and this celebration and this like, um, and also like it, it's like a breadcrumb you basically leave behind. You see like okay, like oh my god, like ten ten years ago I did that, uh, like how embarrassing. But actually, you see like I develop. You know, maybe if if you don't like create something and like leave it behind, you just don't know where where you are coming from, and that you're actually moving. And um, for me, this demo scene defines just that because you have to release. You know, like there are a lot of people like working on productions like for years and years and years. So some of them are like sitting in this room, but they never release. So actually, they don't make demos. 
good thing is that eventually you have to release, even if you if you are not really satisfied. But after, if you don't release, you can't move on. But after you created this artifact, it's just um, it's like it's a really 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 nice sensation. I can't really describe. But I can promise you, like whenever you see something from you on a big screen, you get boost goose gun goosebumps. It doesn't really matter if you win or lose, or like if people like it, you really get goosebumps. It's a really, really nice effect. So that's why I, the reason I'm giving this talk, I want to invite you to give it a try. So um, we don't have like that many musicians here, but actually as a musician, I would always ask, so hey, like if you like imagine having like your track, having like a music video for that. So actually a demo is just that, you know, if you, we can talk to designers, it's like a certain concept, you can actually get like a music video for free. Um, as a developer, like, I, I once heard that like, it's like very rewarding to do like graphical computing because you actually see what you are doing. And um, so if you work in the field of graphical computing, it's even more rewarding to work, work in a demo scene because then somebody will make sure the stuff you do looks really, really beautiful. Um, and obviously, you can decide what you want to do. So if you think like, okay, I want to work with, experiment with L4M and like explore the latest stuff to optimize something, or you want to work with like WebGL, you can just do it, and nobody will tell no will tell you no. And um, finally, as a designer, um, basically, I find no better way to express my own ideas then basically writing tools to do it. So I know quite a, lit, quite a little bit about Maya and Photoshop, but actually to have like developers, like world-class developers that de dedicate a serious amount of time into actually building tools just for me, is really, it's an incredible thing. So it's really like, it's quite, quite a luxury. And so actually, the way to get started is like, hey, events like that. So if you, like, I would say like one out of four is basically very active in the demo scene. So they will basically tell you how to start um, and where to go and what demo scenes, uh, demo scene parties are nice and what are not so nice. Um, then obviously you can, I recommend actually everybody to visit a demo scene party at least once because it's a really, really nice experience. So there are like no friendly, friendlier people somewhere else on the planet than on a demo scene party. Yes, they are really nerdy, but um, they welcome everybody. And uh, for me, this is also like a really nice experience that demo scene parties happen all over the, uh, the European continent. And also like this, we see like an invitation uh, for like the Tokyo demo scene party. So it's a really nice opportunity to basically visit cities, go there, uh, meet some people and actually then explore the city. And um, one thing you could do is um, visit pool.net. Pool.net is the official demo scene database. Um, there are a hell lot of trolls out there. Um, so sometimes it's like very annoying to ask for something because some people will say some very unpolite things. But on the other hand, if you learn to filter out that stuff, people posting there are like incredibly talented people. So it's really like world class computer graphic people tell you like the latest way how to optimize like a certain shader pipeline for like a certain generation of NVIDIA cards that are coming up somewhere. So it's like really, if you ask the right questions and ignore the, the, the wrong, the trolls, it's a really, really nice place to hang out and to learn something. And then um, I would also uh, recommend everybody to play around with like Quartz Composer. I don't know if you have a Mac, you can just like start Spotlight and then type Quartz Composer because it comes pre-installed pre with your Mac. So most people don't know that, but it's actually a really nice time to start exploring with rotating stuff and so on. Um, also, I personally quite like VVVVV, although like, the interface is a little bit quirky, but it's very powerful. And obviously, if you want to like explore a little bit with development and programming, 
even if you don't have like a background in programming, I highly recommend processing. There are really nice books out there and you'll see like immediately what you do. Um, if you have a PC, um, well actually you could help us testing tool. Um, so it, I have to admit, it normally it doesn't run as smoothly as it looked here. So it is under development and once in a while it crashes and um, the documentation is non-existent. Uh, but you can do some stuff with that. Um, I didn't even show you the, the, the instant editor, so you can double click on an operator and actually edit the code in line and you don't need Visual Studio to compile it because like tool can do it for you. And you can actually edit like GLSL shaders on the fly and add uh, parameters and so on. So it's like, um, it's a really nice working environment. And if you are motivated and have some nerves, then uh, just approach me. Um, yeah, and then obviously you can talk to us on the grill and um, grab a flyer. I didn't make made a flyer because um, I was too busy finishing our production. But yeah, I have some resources. Um, so if you are into programming, Preacher, which is a, like another uh, nickname. So he gave like a very nice video seminar on how to start developing with code. So it's like one hour, so it gives like a nice introduction. Obviously, put.net, I mentioned it. Demoparties.net is basically the official databases of upcoming and uh, made, I don't know, like the past tense of upcoming uh, demo scene parties. And it's like really with a world map and you can see like, oh, actually this is a place I always wanted to go there and see like when is the demo party coming up there. And uh, if um, if you want to see some nice demos, you can actually go to awards.scene.org. And um, this is a little bit like the scene Oscar. And they basically like to pick like the best productions of all kinds of product, uh, like all kinds of uh, categories and assemble them for a year. And they have a nice website that basically shows you like a nice pre-selection and you can watch the demos. You don't have to install them, you can watch them there in the video. Okay, actually, that's, that was that. You can also go to our website. We have a lot of uh, screenshots and video captures there. And also like our contact uh, information you will also find there. And that was that. So now... Um, <laughs> so I guess... Um,